the spirit of god reveals the word to you second timothy 3 16 all scripture is given by inspiration of god the word inspiration is the word breath the breath of god all scripture is given by the pneuma the breath the breath it is that breath that gives revelation that breath the same breath that inspired the writings is the same breath that brings understanding or revelation knowledge where you read but you see beyond the letters into the spirit and that is what strengthens you with might revelation of the holy ghost gives you strength because the food of the spirit man is spirit the breath of god the breath of god hallelujah so the scriptures are given to us number one for doctrine the word doctrine there is teaching or learning or explanation number two reproof the word reproof there is the word conviction the scriptures are given to us for conviction or substance that that word reproof is the word for substance the same word in hebrews 11 1 now faith is the substance now faith is the reproof or the conviction so the scriptures are given to us for doctrine they are given to us for reproof which is substance or conviction they are given to us for correction and for instructions in righteousness meaning that the scriptures are the boundary of christian knowledge the scriptures are the boundary of christian knowledge you cannot acquire any form of christian knowledge outside the scriptures meaning that a man's experience does not define or does not validate the scriptures that a man had a dream and in that dream he went to heaven and on the queue to heaven there were other people on the queue and jesus was standing at the gate of heaven with a keyboard is opposite him and the keyboard was playing the music and as people are arriving if jesus looks at you and does like this you enter heaven if jesus looks at you and does like this they ask you to step aside for hell that a man dreamt that dream even if he's the pope of the pentecostal church that dream is fraud that dream is a lie now whether he calls it a dream a vision a revelation it is all a lie why there is nowhere in the boundary of christian knowledge you didn't hear that there is nowhere in the boundary of christian knowledge that says the sinner and the believer will be on the same queue there is no place like that are you with me here there is no place like that in the boundary of christian knowledge rather the dead in christ shall rise first then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up we shall go our journey is different from their journey those who don't believe in jesus will appear before the great white throne while we that believe in jesus we will appear at the judgment seat of christ it is called the bema seat there is a diff in your village in english is there no difference between seat of christ and great white throne are they the same in english there is no time the sinner and the believer will be on the same queue because already he that believeth is not condemned already he that believeth not will be condemned is condemned is condemned so it's not heaven at last it is heaven now so the bible is the boundary of christian knowledge somebody shout i hear you so to understand salvation or any subject of the scripture we must stay with the scriptures we must stay with the scriptures 
now salvation is god's will for man we've established that and we're establishing that second timothy chapter 3 verse 15 and from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation how through faith which is where in christ jesus so what do the scriptures teach us they teach us the wisdom of salvation through faith which is in christ jesus and he said to timothy that from a child you have been acquainted from a child you have intimate knowledge of the scriptures meaning that timothy got born again as a young man he got saved as a young man and he got acquainted with the scriptures as a young man and what scriptures did timothy get acquainted with the scriptures that bring him wisdom in the subject of salvation meaning that the scriptures primarily unveils god's plan of salvation primarily the scriptures unveil god's plan of salvation meaning that the the purpose for the scripture is not to look for which verses say you will make money that the purpose of the scripture is not to look for which verses say you will get husband the purpose of the bible is not to locate verses that say you will get pregnant that's not the purpose the purpose of the scripture is to bring us wisdom in salvation this salvation is gotten through faith which is where in christ jesus and somebody says so can't we find husband from the scriptures that's not the purpose for it you don't need the scriptures to find a husband there are people marrying without the scriptures all over the place what was the mission statement of jesus she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name what jesus why he shall save who his people from what from their sin now before jesus came were they not marrying bible said they were marrying and giving in marriage so he didn't come for marriage he came to save his people from their sins is that clear so the scriptures have one fundamental assignment to bring us wisdom in the subject of salvation somebody shout hallelujah no wonder jesus said in john 5 39 search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life but they are they which testify of me meaning that jesus is the message of the scriptures because the scriptures testify of him in the book of colossians chapter 3 verse 11 put it up for me where there is neither greek nor jew circumcision nor uncircumcision barbarian sinti and bond or free but christ is all and in all nothing else is just christ he is all and in all he's the totality of everything he makes everything dear to us or christ is the explanation of all things or christ unveils to us the scriptures or christ reveals to us the intent of the scriptures that 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 is jesus is the embodiment of the purpose for the scriptures in in the book of first peter chapter 1 verse 9 look at it receiving the end of your faith even the salvation of your souls next verse of which salvation the prophets have inquired what were the prophets inquiring for salvation of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that shall come unto you next verse searching what or what manner of time the spirit of christ which was in them did signify when he testified beforehand the sufferings of christ and the glory that shall follow meaning that christ is the revelation of the bible or the answer is in christ the answer to all of life's questions is in christ when you see christ every question in your life is answered 
don't look for answers look for christ when you see christ in him all answers are supplied so to, to have any puzzle of your life resolved look for christ hallelujah look at this second peter 119 we have also a more sure word of prophecy whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts next verse knowing this first i thought somebody would shout first okay knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation meaning nobody can just stand up and say this is the way i understand it eh? this is the way i understand it no there's nothing like that scriptures explain themselves no private interpretation nobody can just come up with his opinion the scriptures are self-explanatory no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation the scripture is called prophecy no prophecy put it up for me of the scripture is of any private interpretation watch this for the prophecy the, the bible is called the prophecy for the prophecy so when i preach out of the scriptures what am i doing i'm prophesying where is the prophecy in the scriptures where is the scripture genesis to malachi for the prophecy of the scripture so genesis to malachi is the prophecy or types and shadows remember the whole bible is not the scripture the whole bible is not the scripture the scripture is genesis to malachi Matthew to Revelation is not called scripture. Remember when Paul told Timothy, search the scriptures. There was no book of Timothy. So Timothy is not the scripture. When Jesus said in John 5 39, search the scripture, there was no John. When Jesus said in Matthew, you do err because you know not the scripture. There was no book of Matthew. When Paul said in Romans, according to the scriptures of the prophets, there was no book of Romans. Meaning that Romans is not the scripture. Timothy is not the scripture. John is not the scripture. Matthew is not the scripture. So if John and Matthew are not the scripture, it means the gospels are not the scripture. And if Romans and Timothy are not the scripture, it means the epistles are not the scripture. So the scripture will refer to Genesis to Malachi. So when he says, for the prophecy of the scripture, what he's simply saying is that in the scripture, what we have is prophecy. The Old Testament is prophecy, promises, types, and shadows. That's the Old Testament. Okay? Put it up. For the prophecy came not in all time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. The word interpretation, no scripture is of any private interpretation means origin. No scripture is of any private origin and no scripture is of any private source. Nobody spoke his own thoughts. So, there is one thread that ties the scriptures together. One thread. And that thread is Christ. Matthew, Christ. Revelation, Christ. Genesis, Christ. Malachi, Christ. All through the books of the Bible, 66 of them, they are tied together with one thread, Christ. That's what makes them the scripture. Any book that was written, for it to be part of the scripture, it has to have Christ as the center that is how the bible 
was put together over 40 authors kings traders fishermen farmers over centuries who have never met one another before and they all wrote at separate times and in different dispensations when their books and writings were collected together it had one message christ it is those books put together that forms the bible Hallelujah. are we in the house so the bible therefore we say it's a christocentric book that carries with it what a christocentric message praise the lord i say praise the lord so meaning that when i read the bible i will see christ in the bible his essence his prophecy his promise and i will also see his promise fulfilled i will see his promise fulfilled john 1 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god that word word is the word logos in the beginning was the logos the greek word logos the word logos means the thoughts jesus is called the word of god from the onset and the reason why john used the word word of god was that what john was saying is jesus is the thinking pattern of god jesus is the mindset so to know the intent of god look at christ to know what god is thinking look at christ to know what god will do look at christ are we here so let me ask you when jesus was on earth did he kill anybody so god does not kill because jesus is the thinking pattern of god watch jesus said i can of myself do nothing what i see my father do that i do that means all jesus did was a revelation of what the father does so the question is what does the father do what jesus does what did jesus do he went about doing and healing all so wherever you see the father what does he do he does good number two he heals everybody that is sick and he doesn't heal you because you are a christian he heals you because you are a human being he doesn't ask you are you born again before i heal you no he makes his son to shine on the good and on the bad he is so benevolent that whether you believe in god or not even if you're an atheist who said there is no god if you're sick and we pray for you you will be well now if an unbeliever can receive healing how much more a believer the logos of god the thinking pattern of god jesus the mindset of god jesus the thought of god the intent of god jesus the intent behind the actions of god the locus of god all of jesus life on earth he killed nobody so when you see men of god praying for people to die those men of god are either ignorant or purely wicked is one of them because they are not they are not they are not ambassadors of christ he gave life in fact somebody carried a child and the child was dead when jesus saw them he told her to drop the child down he didn't ask are you a believer are you not a believer he said madam you shouldn't be crying when i'm here drop the child down. child stand up madam go he didn't say now that i've healed your child will you follow me he does not do it because he expects anything in return i don't know if i'm talking to somebody here he doesn't bless because he expects you to you know he's not a man he's not a man when it comes to behavior he doesn't say eh, you will get contract next week let me give you now so that when you get contract you remember me even the contract it is because of his goodness that you got it somebody shout hallelujah so jesus is the thinking pattern of god now please follow me i'm going somewhere are you still here okay so jesus is the reason behind the action 
Jesus is the intelligence that brings to pass the motive of God. Jesus is the summation, the essence, the substance, the very reason of God's entire plan for us. Jesus is the reason behind the action, the thought behind the action, the intelligence that brings to pass the motive. Jesus is the summation, the essence, the substance, the very reason of God's entire plan for us. Meaning that when the prophets were prophesying, they were prophesying based on Jesus. So the scriptures are all about Christ. In John chapter 1 verse 43, put it up for me. The day following, Jesus will go forth into Galilee and find it Philip and said unto him, follow me. 44. Now Philip was of Bethesda, the city of Andrew and Peter. 45. Philip find it Nathaniel and said unto him, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Hallelujah. Moses were in the law and the prophets what was their writing jesus of nazareth so whether you are reading the law of moses or you are reading the prophecy of the prophets there is only one thing you are supposed to see whether in the law or in the prophecy what are you supposed to see jesus of nazareth here's the message luke 24 44 jesus looked at those disciples on the way to emmaus and he said unto them these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written where? In the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. I am the one Moses was talking about. I am the one the prophets were talking about. I am the reason why David sang. So when David was saying, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. What David was saying is, he that gets born again. You can't be born again and still be saying, I will dwell in the secret place. No, no, no. Born again is dwelling in the secret place. You are in him. He's in you. Which other secret place is better than that? So David was singing prophetically concerning the Messiah. What his death, his burial, his resurrection will provide. It will give birth to a race, a breed, a class, a generation of humanity that never existed before. And those people are sitting here tonight. If your amen is louder, you're one in the number. Lift your right hand and shout, I'm born of God. I win all the time. I thought I would hear a powerful amen. amen. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. So now, why will God save you? Why will God save you? Jesus reveals the Father's intent to us by what he says and does. Because Jesus is the revelation of the scriptures. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 3. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? Notice, he didn't say neglect not if God doesn't save us. He says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation that is god has already provided salvation irrespective of our actions okay so since god has already provided salvation the responsibility to enjoy it is on us how shall we escape if we neglect the salvation that God has already made available. Do you remember the prorismos and the prorizo? You remember? Okay. I'm still on it. Oh. I'm still there. It's just that tonight I'm trying to give you fundamentals before we push it forward. 
Look at the book of 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 1. I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men. For kings and for all that are in authority. That we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Who will the will of God? Who will have all men to be saved? What is the will of God? To have all men to be saved. If I'm opportune to pray for governors and pray for presidents, what prayer am I supposed to pray for them? To be saved. That's a fundamental. Who that is the will of God? Who will have all men to be saved? Who are the all men? Kings, those in authority, presidents, because the will of God is to have how many men? All men to be what? Saved. So, what is the will of God for all men? Salvation. The will of God for all men is salvation. Who will have all men to be saved? Not just to be saved, but to come unto the knowledge of the truth. So it's not enough to be born again. Beyond born again, you must sit down in 30 days of glory. So you can be given the knowledge of the truth. He wants you to be saved. And at the same time, it is his will for you to have the knowledge of the truth. It's not just to be born again. Born again is it. But you have to know why you got born again. It's not enough to just be born again. Now that's God's will for humanity. He said this is good and acceptable in the sight of God. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God. Put up for me that first Timothy chapter, chapter 2 verse 4. Look at this. Who will have all men to be saved? And to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Verse 5. For there is one God. And one mediator. Between God and men. The man. Christ Jesus. Who is the mediator? The man. The man. Christ Jesus. Give me the next verse. Who gave himself. A ransom. For how many? For all. To be testified. In due time. So, he gave himself a ransom for all. Why? Because God's will and plan for men is salvation. Not some selected few. All. All. So, it is the will of God to save everybody. Including those in government. Including those in authority. So the salvation plan of God does not preclude anybody. The salvation plan of God does not preclude anybody. 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness. But is long suffering to us world. Not willing that any should perish. But that some should come to repentance. How many? So how many people does God want to be saved? How many people did God take action and created an enablement for to be saved? Oh, so is there any reason why anybody should not be saved? No. There's no reason. Look at verse 9 of that Peter where we're reading. Verse 9 of it. The Lord is not slack. That means he didn't just make a promise and relax on a reclining chair. He made the promise and attached action to that promise. What action? He gave himself a ransom for all. He died that all may be saved. Give me verse 15 of that Second Peter 3. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is what? Salvation. That's why you've been, you know, people pray for a native doctor to die. 
instead of the native doctor dying he is growing fat instead of the native doctor dying more important people are visiting him i'm giving him money and car you are praying for him to die he has opened a branch god is long suffering god is long suffering not willing that any soul even that native doctor in his native doctorism god is expecting his salvation i'm teaching here yeah god doesn't want anybody to be to be lost jesus died for how many he gave himself a ransom for how many so therefore he is expecting to be saved look at ezekiel in the prophecy ezekiel 18 32 cast away from you all your transgressions whereby you have transgressed and make you a new heart and a new spirit for why will you die o house of israel for i have no pleasure in the death of him that died saith the lord god wherefore turn yourselves and leave ye god is saying it's not my will for any person to die i have no pleasure in the death of a wicked person some of you when somebody who is wicked die you celebrate ah, ah, let us rest he has died god is pained god is hot that he lost that one while you are happy that a wicked man has gotten out of your way god is so pained that that one has been lost that means it will be wicked for any christian to have pleasure in the death of a wicked person no matter how wicked he is god wants him to be saved that is the will of god it gives god pleasure to see that man saved so if god has to be long suffering for that man to be saved he will go out of his way to see what he can do to help that man live longer by adventure in the process of living he will see the need to accept salvation now can you see the good news i mean can you see how far god is is willing to go when it comes to souls he has no pleasure in the death of the wicked that's the salvation plan of god ezekiel 33 11 say unto them as i live saith the lord god i have no pleasure in the death of the wicked but that the wicked turn from his way and live turn ye turn ye from your evil ways for why will you die o house of israel that's the will of god god doesn't kill this should motivate evangelism God has no pleasure in the death of Herod. He has no pleasure in the death of Pharaoh. Do you know that Jesus speaking in Matthew says, Hellfire was created for Satan and his angels. Hellfire is not created for man. God never intended. So when hell was created, human configuration was not in the calculation so hell has zero tolerance for man man was not in the picture you know what i mean eh? the calculations you know god calculates you know god calculates mathematics is from god i hope you know if you look at the way he measured the galaxies and you look at the way he measures the planet you look at the span you look at you know that god is the most creative you know being on the planet so when he was calculating the chemicals the combination for hellfire man was not in his mind the people that hellfire was configured for is satan and his angels so if any man by mistake 
by any mistake if any man enters there thank god for jesus that's why paul i mean the writer of hebrews say how shall we escape if we neglect what kind of salvation look at the emotion so great salvation how hellfire was created for satan and his angels no wonder the book of first john chapter 2 says he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only but for the sins of the whole world god's salvation plan first timothy 1 15 you will love this one this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that christ jesus came into the world to save sinners of which i am chief that is in the salvation of god even if you are a chief of sinners you are part of the salvation plan paul said i'm a chief of sinners but can't you see the grace of god that the chief sinner became the chief apostle it doesn't matter how notorious a man was when he accepts the plan of god's salvation that record dies that record never repeats anymore where god is concerned that's why paul will come to the church at corinth and say receive us receive us we have defrauded no man we have wronged no man we have cheated no man and i'm sure the widows in that church will look at him and i'm sure the little little children that are fatherless because of of saul of tassos will be looking at this and look at the audacity of righteousness he looks at them and says, i have wronged no man i and i can imagine the preaching finger the preaching anointing i have defrauded no man if any man be in christ all things are past behold behold i thought you would shout behold that is where the key is you have to behold it see see you are no more the person you used to be the past is gone this is a brand new man this is not an updated version this is not an improved edition the old man was removed a new being has been planted somebody shout i hear you that's why paul will say i have been crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i it is christ that lives in me the life that i now live in the flesh i live by the faith of the son of god who loved me and gave stand on your feet let me close if you're blessed shout i am blessed i said if you're blessed shout i am blessed stand on your feet turn to somebody and tell him i am saved, I am saved. Sanctified, sanctified accepted, accepted perfected, perfected and glorified. glorified i didn't hear your amen, amen. saved yes. sanctified yes. accepted yes. perfected yes. glorified yes. for how long yes. somebody shout my name is in the book of life say it was not written with pencil so no eraser can erase it you know why they think that the name is written with pencil because they think that the book of life is a book the book of life is not a book the book of life is a person jesus say i am the way i am the truth so jesus is the book of life so when you enter christ your name is written in the book of life so it's not like pencil to write am i teaching here you and jesus are one somebody shout i am bone of his bones i am flesh of his flesh i and jesus cannot be separated he cannot die i cannot die he cannot fail 
I cannot fail. I cannot fail. He cannot be poor. I cannot be poor. He cannot be defeated. I cannot be defeated. I am in him justified. He is in me glorified. I am saved, sanctified, accepted, justified, perfected, glorified. Can your amen slap the devil? I prophesy over this house tonight as your amen will come like thunder everything that salvation has provided concerning you is manifesting right now it's manifesting right now ah, we are persuaded better things that accompany salvation those better things that accompany salvation as your amen is coming like thunder they are manifesting in your life they are manifesting in your life one of our online viewers sent me a testimony today she said yesterday when you asked us to declare my youth is renewed like the eagle seven times she said i declare it i had an accident some years ago i could not use my knee excruciating pain i've not been able to use my knee for anything not even to squat it's been so painful he said but that last night when we began to say our youth is renewed like the eagle she said then as you finish you now said what you couldn't do before do it she said she squatted and discovered there was no pain and she said since that yesterday she has squatted 50 times not even an iota of pain jesus cannot have pain i Any hangover in your body, I flush out. If your amen is louder, I flush it out. Gebosa kelena katana. Excess sugar, I flush out. Excess blood pressure, I flush out. Insufficient blood pressure, I correct. You know, it's not everybody that has high blood. There are people that have low blood. God hates unjust balance. God hates unjust balance. It shouldn't be high. It shouldn't be low. It should be balanced. As your amen is coming like thunder, I command every organ of your body to be balanced. I command it to be balanced. Your sight is restored. Your hearing is corrected. Your bones are corrected. Your flesh is corrected. Your tissue, your tendons, your ligaments, your muscles, your joints, your marrow. Every cell in your body comes alive. Where there has been no circulation. Where there has been no circulation in your body. Every numbness. Every lack of circulation in your body. As your amen is coming like thunder, I command blood to flow there. Blood flow there. I rebuke insomnia, depression. Go. Somebody shout, I am in him. In him, there is no sickness. I am in him. In him, there is no disease. Say, I am complete. In him, who is the head of all principalities and powers. I thought I will hear your amen like thunder. Lift your two hands. I decree over you tonight as your amen will come like thunder all over this building right now i command your body be well your mind be well your business be well your career be restored your job be restored your job be restored receive connections receive opportunities receive favor this is 30 days of glory we are shame was looking at you glory has swallowed it Glory has swallowed it in the name of Jesus. It is done. Done. 